Today I'm going to talk about speed. My name is William Justice and this is about learning filmmaking. Getting things done faster. Today I wanted to take a step back and share a few tips and shortcuts that I'm learning to use when I'm editing in DaVinci Resolve. Every second you save editing your projects is time that you can spend being more creative and building amazing content. There are a lot of shortcuts I'm going to cover in this video. Don't worry about learning them all. It just takes a little bit of time and practice. Just pick out a few things that you use frequently, try them out, and you'll get faster and after a while it'll become natural and you won't even have to think about it. Also remember that all the shortcut keys in DaVinci Resolve are customizable, so you can change them and make them easier for you to remember and access on your keyboard. So let's get started. Being efficient with how you navigate the timeline can be a huge productivity booster. Okay, we have a simple timeline here and I'm gonna show you a few different things you can do to navigate it and move around it just a little bit easier. To move the timeline around, instead of grabbing the bar down here and moving like that, um, sometimes it's easier when you hit the center mouse wheel button and you can just drag it left and right. For zooming in and out, you can hit control plus and control minus, or you can grab the zoom tool up here. But a lot of times it's easier if you hit the alt key and all you have to do is move your mouse wheel and it'll zoom in and out real easily right where you are. You don't have to move your mouse anywhere. It's a lot easier. So one of the things I use a lot is there's a quick zoom out to full and a zoom back in. If you hit shift Z, you see it zooms all the way back out and then hit shift Z again and it zooms right back into where you were. So this is really great for moving around your project on the timeline. You hit shift Z, you pick a point in the timeline, timeline where you want to go, you hit shift Z and it zooms right back in. This is much easier than scrolling around trying to find the spot where you want to, where you want to start editing. And another quick one is if you hit uh, P, you get a full screen view and you can actually play your project full screen. And escape gets you back. There's a quick way to select clips and even have clips automatically selected for you so that you can access them in the inspector. A lot of times when editing, you wanna make sure that you have the correct clip selected, especially if you're using the inspector and you want to change some properties. A quick way to select a clip is to do Shift V that will automatically select the clip that's beneath the playhead. So you hit Shift V, and if we want to go over here, we hit Shift V and we can go right to the inspector. Another thing you can do is to use the arrow keys to select the next and previous clips once a, once a clip is selected. So we'll hit this one, we'll hit Shift V to select this clip, and I'm going to hit the up arrow and it goes back, hit the down arrow and it's going to go further down in the timeline. See it's selecting each clip as we go. This makes it really quick to go exactly to the clip that you want to get to. Another interesting option you can try is the in the timeline menu, there is an option called um, Selection Follows Playhead. And this is a trick because as you play your clip, the selection is automatically going to follow the playhead and it's going to change. Stop it right there. And the inspector's there if we keep playing. It goes right here and we can change some settings on this one. We can say zoom in and it just keeps the settings for you right there. So you don't have to worry about selecting a clip. It's automatically selected the one that you're looking at. Use shortcuts to quickly review and replay your timeline. You can hit the space bar to play. If you tap up here in the timeline, it's going to automatically go to where you're in the timeline. That's a quick way to repeat clips. Another thing you can do is hit Alt L and that'll go back to the last point where you started playing the clip. You can use the stop and go to last position option if you want to replay clips as well. To enable that, you hit Alt K and you play. And as soon as I hit the space bar to stop, it's going to automatically go to the last point I started. So it keep, it's really easy to keep replaying a section this way as you're making adjustments to your clips and settings. Instead of selecting mode icons with your mouse, use the keyboards to switch modes. So using the keyboard keys is a great way to switch between these modes up here. You have the selection key, the trim mode and the blade tool. Those are the ones that I use the most. Um, anywhere you are, if you hit A, it's going to choose the selection right here so you can select clips and drag them around. If you hit T, it's going to choose the trim mode. And this is the one where you can take clips and you can drag them around like this. And it keeps them in the timeline. The last one you can do is hit, uh, well, last one I use is hit B to do the blade mode. And this allows you to make cuts in your clips just like this. So we'll back that out. Um, another thing is if you have, if you're in selection mode, you can actually cut clips without using, having to select the blade tool. If you hover, if you put the, uh, the timeline pointer right there, hit control B, it'll make cuts for you just like that. I'll undo those. 
The trim mode is great for adjusting your clips without having to move all your other clips around in the timeline. We'll hit T to get to trim mode. This is a great way to adjust the cuts in your clips without having to worry about all the other clips in the timeline. Everything will move to keep the correct spacing. So what you can do is when you move the, your mouse over one of the clips on either side, you can click it and you can drag the cut point and you can move it around. You notice all the rest of the things in the timeline adjust to keep the same spacing. You can do it on both sides. You can make it smaller or bring it out. The other thing you can do is it also automatically has the slip tool built in. You notice when you hover over the top part, you can take the clip and you can adjust the timing without changing where the cut happens. Just this clip will start a little bit sooner or later depending on where you slide it to. Instead of using the blade tool to cut your clip and then delete out the part that you don't want, try using the quick trim keyboard keys. If you want to get a cut here, you might hit the blade tool, cut this, select it, you might hit backspace to delete it, then you might click that spot and um, you know ripple delete it and everything shifts over. That's one way to go. Another quick way to go is to use the quick trim command. So if we select this clip and say we want to put the cut right there, um, we'll be in the trim mode, you hit shift and you hit the left bracket and it's going to cut the clip right to where you had it. You can do the same thing on this one right here cuts it right like that. So it saves a quick step. You don't even have to use the blade tool and it'll trim the clip exactly where you want it. If you have gaps between your clips, use the delete gaps command to automatically delete all the gaps. Um, a quick way to do this as well as having to click them and move them all around or delete each of these spaces is to use the edit menu and select delete gaps. And that'll automatically delete them and put all the clips back together. And one thing is this doesn't always work, especially if you have other clips like this audio clip here that's down below here, it won't um, close these gaps if there's no gaps in the clip clips below it. Sometimes you just want to move a clip by a frame or two. You can use the nudge keys to do this. It'll shift a clip over to the left, over to the right, very easily. You actually use the nudge uh, keys quite a bit. They are the comma and period, but it's easier if you think about them as the greater than or less than. All you have to do is select a clip right here. Like I'll select this audio clip and you hit the greater than or less than and you can move it over one frame at a time like this, or if you hit shift, you can move it one second at a time to the left or the right. Um, this is really great for audio because it makes it really easy to position the audio. So see if we play it here, we can have it come in right there, or we can click it and have it you know, come in just a couple frames later. Just like that. Okay, this is one that uh, it, it makes it really convenient to quickly rearrange your timeline. If you have a click, clip here, and a lot of times you want to move it, you might move this one up. Slide, slide one over, move this guy back in and drop it in that spot. Um, it takes quite a bit of mouse moves to do that. Um, a much easier way is to select a clip and hit control shift and then you use those same keys with the nudge with the left and right and it'll actually swap the clip with the one to the right of it and I can move it back over to the left. It's very easy to do, keeps everything in order. You can also um, click, con click control and shift and drag the clip. And it does probably the same thing. Um, you have a little bit more control of actually where you want to put it. It'll put it in between the, the uh, next or previous clip. Quickly fade a clip in or out using the cross dissolve handles. It'll save a lot of time. The uh, cross dissolve handles are what show up when you hover your mouse over a clip. It's these little things in the top left and right. You can take those and drag them in and that actually will do a fade in and a fade out. Um, it's really convenient and quick. Um, if you need more, more control, you can always use some other options to do it. But if you're looking for a, uh, a quick way to do it, to get the job done, it's right there for you and easy to do. So if you want the fade to be a little bit longer, you just take that handle and you drag it out. And then we're gonna get a longer fade, just like that. Organizing your clips into multiple timelines can make it much easier to manage your project. To use multiple timelines, um, it's Pretty easy. All you got to do is go up into the media pool area. You can right click timelines and you can create a new timeline. Um, those are in your media area. You can put them in whatever bin you, you'd like. Once you have uh, multiple timelines, you can switch between them quickly down here in the timeline area. What you do is you hit the timeline icon up right here and choose this option, which will enable what they call the multiple timelines. And you can see we have a tab for each of the timelines. I've kind of set up two of them here, one called tutorial and one called work. And to switch between them, you just have to click the tab and I can start working on this one and then go back up the over to the tutorial. You can also change um, which timeline is in a tab by hitting this little drop down area and choose it from the list of these are all the timelines that I've created right here. So it's uh, really convenient to switch between them. I've included a quick keyboard shortcut reference in the description of this video. 
There are many more shortcuts that you can use, but these are the ones that I try, I'm trying to learn and use most often. The key combinations may be a bit more overwhelming, but once you get used to them, they're really easy and very natural. I hope using some of these shortcuts will help you become a more efficient editor and get things done faster. I'm still learning Resolve and would love to hear your tips and tricks and the things that you do and how you use Resolve to edit better. Let me know in the comments below. I definitely appreciate your feedback. If you like my videos, please subscribe. I have lots more coming and hope to hear from you soon. Thanks.